Welcome to another video from Auto Garage Life and today we've got something a little bit different. Can you see it peeking over there, peeking over the Mustang? We've got a new project for the channel and it's a 1999 C5 Chevrolet Corvette. Which has seen better days, you can probably see the front bumpers faded there already but it needs quite a bit of TLC to get this one back on the road so let's go and take a closer look. Alright, so typically when I was filming this part of it, my microphone died, so sorry for the voiceover, but let's crack on anyway, let's have a look at this car. So this car has been sitting still for over two and a half years, not turned a wheel, outside, in the sun, hence why the front bumpers get really bad oxidation. We've got some Kiddywinkle handprints there that are on the door, and there's a couple more of them all over the car, I don't know what's put on their hands, but it won't come off with washing. The roof is badly oxidised as well, it's got the kind of moonroof, the... the you know, clear glass roof, so it needs to be sanded and resprayed. Interior wise, does smell pretty bad of dampness, got a bit of mould here and there. But the good thing about the interior is that the leather seats and the dash are undamaged, so there's no tears or rips anywhere. So that is a positive. So we'll get that all cleaned up eventually. If we go round to the trunk, exterior again needs a complete detail, the back bumper's oxidised. Open up the trunk, I've got, got it in bits and pieces, so I was taking out some bulbs because the car does have a bad um, battery drain, so I need to get that solved, fixed, fixed first, sorry. Bumper's got some tears coming down from the, the lights, don't know what's happened there, needs a good valet. All the tyres are shot, they've been a bald spot, the brakes and pads need replaced in all four corners. The whole thing needs a good valley and the outside as well, the wipers need replaced, the cowl cover could do with the respray. Someone's left a little love heart there on the front bumper, there's still love for this car yet. Engine needs a full detail, it needs the tensioners replaced, both belts replaced, all the filters, I have to put a new battery in it already because of that drain. Uh, and we've got a, a full detail to do on the engine bay as well. So, I don't like working in dirty cars, so let's get the car washed on the outside first. Then we'll get it um, inside into the garage and give get the seats out and give the interior a full carpet extraction and valley and all the rest of it. And then we'll deal probably first with that battery drain and see what's happening. Uh, we'll see if it's something easy or if I need to start pulling fuses to find out what the, the circuit is that's causing it. But I do want to install a remote battery disconnect switch on this as well because it won't be used every day. It might sit for a week or so anyway so it makes sense to install one of them as well as hook it up to a trickle charger in the winter so mileage in this car i'll leave it until the end what do you think have a guess on the mileage of this car so actually a 1998 sorry i think i said 99 at the start of the video but it's a 98 registered car have a guess at the mileage because it is a bit of a gem and we'll just crack on with this exterior wash first of all see what we're left with and we'll also have to do some paint correction so enjoy this part and I'll see you back in the garage.
right, that's good for a first pass, but now I really need to deal with these bumpers. I can't take it any longer. I can't stand looking at these things. I want to see what I can do to get them back to looking almost factory again. So let's give this another spray down with some panel wipes, some quick detailer. And what I'm also going to do in this case is get out the orbital polisher. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, clay bar the whole panel just to make sure there's no little bits of dirt that the orbital polisher might spread around and cause more scratches. And I'm going to go with the kind of path of least resistance or the, the least aggressive method first. I had considered wet sanding this, but I'm just going to get out the Meguiar's compound and use my dual action polisher and see how we get on with it. Right, so we've moved inside the garage and I'm going to do a vacuum overall. I'm going to do a vacuum in the engine bay as well. And I've got the clear glass roof off just now because it needs some restoration as well. So it's been oxidized quite badly. The clear lacquer has gone from this part here. So we might have to sand that all back. But I might just hit it with a dual action polisher first and see if we can get out most of these minor scratches here and then see what damage has been done to the lacquer at a later date but it's, we'll get it restored fully because you can't actually see through it right now it, because you, oh, you, you can but you can see the, the lines of the lacquer and the peeling and all the rest of it so it's not the best looking so we'll get that sorted in a, another video we'll do a single video for that alone but for now we need to get this thing cleaned I don't like working cars that haven't been uh, detailed so I'm going to give it a full detail inside and out get the seats out get the hoovering done and also get the engine bay clean because it's pretty bad as well it's not had a clean for mm, maybe forever but we'll give that a good once over and we'll also going to be taking note of all the parts I need to service it including the tension or the belts the oil the filters See if we need to flush the brake fluid, check out the coolant, do all the fluids as well, and we'll get the car serviced. So let's crack on and get this thing clean.
Alright, so that will do for our first kind of clean up. I just cannot stand working on a car that needs a good wash and a clean, particularly on the inside. So that's us done that as a first pass. So once I've done all the work that I need to do to this car, I'll go over it again with the orbital polisher. There's some bits in the trunk lid that I need to do and some scratches here that I could do with get rid of and on the, the hood. So we'll go across that again with the orbital polisher. Maybe give it a ceramic coating or at least a, a wax or something or a sealant at the end of it. And I'm going to get four new tyres put on so I didn't bother cleaning the wheels at the moment because we'll get that done first. So, car's looking not too bad. You can see you're, I'm preparing for the onslaught of further cleaning that will come later on. Did take the driver's seat in and out to Hoover and clean in underneath that as well. Just didn't show it on camera because so it's basically exactly the same as this one. I've left this out just now because the car does have a battery drain that I mentioned earlier that I'll need to address. So I need to access to this panel and it's just me being 6'3 and weighing quite a lot. It makes a lot life a lot easier if I've got the seat out. So we'll leave that out for the time being. So let's go over the list of things that I need to do to get this car MOT'd. Remedy works in the US. An MOT test in the UK is an annual inspection that all cars must go through. All cars that are 40 years or older don't need to do it, but anything that's less than that does. And it checks everything's working properly. It checks the lights, it checks the tyres, it checks the brakes, it checks for rust, it checks for uh, any cracks in the windscreens, etc. It checks for warning lights in the dashboards and various things that basically the government say you need to have in your car working to make it safe to drive on the road. And this one at the moment would fail. It would fail on tyres, it would fail on brakes. Um, but the battery drain itself might not get picked up in an MOT test. So, but that is probably the biggest pain in terms of things going wrong with this car at the moment. So let's go over a list of everything we need to do from front to back. All right, so starting at the front, there's not too much going on here, apart from the fact I would like to put a new logo on it and take that one off, paint correct underneath it and stick a new one back on. So chances are if I take this one off, it will probably snap and break on me. One thing I would like to try and look at, we've got the tow hook hooked up there at the front. Don't really like it. I don't know if it's a permanent fixture on the 1998 models or whether I can remove it, but we'll have a look at that and see if we can get that removed because it just gives it a cleaner look at the front. Front indicator light here was flashing double quick time, so clearly we've got a short somewhere or a bulb out that we'll need to address. Uh, moving on to the engine bay, New air filter, obviously, we need to put in. I'm going to put new belts on it and a new tensioner here. This tensioner pulley is wobbly when the engine's sitting at idle and makes a really loud squeaky noise. So we need to get that addressed. New oil, new filter. We'll check the plugs, sorry, first and we'll see if they need change. I think they have been done fairly recently, but we'll have a look anyway. Check the coolant as well, see if that needs drained. We've already put this new battery in. It's disconnected just now because of the battery drain. Engine bay will do a proper full detail on it once I've completed all the work that I need to do in the engine bay itself. We'll check the brake fluid. If it's contaminated, we'll flush it all out when we're doing all four brake discs. And we'll probably install one of the battery remote disconnects just in case there is a slight drain after I've found, hopefully, what's causing the main drain. But we'll install that anyway because, like I said before, this car will probably sit for a good few weeks uh, between drives, so it's worth getting one of those remote disconnects and putting it on. Won't take long. Need new wiper blades, part of the MOT test as well. These could do with a respray the wiper arm. The cowl could do with a uh, wee bit of treatment on it just to bring it back to to black. And that's pretty much everything we're going to be doing in the engine bay area. Moving down to the front here, the front tires need replaced, as do the front brake discs and pads. You can see they're pretty badly corroded, the brake discs there. Don't know what state the pads are in, but I wouldn't put old pads on a new disc. I would just get a new full set. So they are, they are being ordered. We seem to be missing a few of the lug nut covers as well. Cosmetic. The wheels need a respray. Or at least sanded down and touched up the same colour. I think these are the magnesium coloured wheels. So I need to see if I can get paint to, to match them. But all four brake discs and pads will be getting replaced as well. Moving down here, passenger window doesn't work. 
seems to not react to the switch in the passenger door or on the driver's door so might have a short or a ground problem with the cables coming into in here i don't think it's a switch because the the driver's door is not working either when you're trying to put the passenger window down so that's something we need to look at battery drain itself we need to check the fuse panel underneath the glove box there plus there's also the fuse panel in the, uh, the engine bay if you want to know how to check for a parasitic drain i'll be doing a specific video and see, see if i can find the parasitic drain first of all um, you can do that by checking each individual fuse or you can do it with a an amp meter test on the battery once the system's all shut down so we'll do that <clears throat> do want to look at possibly upgrading the stereo it might not be for me to decide that but we can look at upgrading the stereo or at least putting some form of adapter in so a phone can connect through the existing speakers interior is pretty nice as i said before it's everything's in good condition so not too much to do there the bit that's missing here is the roof mentioned that earlier it's sitting over there just now it does need a bit of work i don't know if you can pick this up on camera but it is pretty heavily oxidized and the clear lacquer is disappearing from this kind of arc here so we need to sand that all back um, and probably give it a coat of clear lacquer one or two coats of clear lacquer and give it a machine polish to bring it back to the glass effect so not the nicest of looking at the moment but we'll address that moving back here trunk opens fine buttons work fine in interior that's okay rear brakes pretty much the same story as the front ones and once i get these off i'll also be checking all the suspension bushes and the sway bar links and the sway bar bushes etc to see if we need to do anything with them this tire actually quite sadly is quite new but it's got a little bit of a bald spot because it's been sitting still for over two years so it'll need to be changed if we're changing the, the other one so that'll have to go at the back this tail light here in the uk the lights are different to that in the us they've got the built-in indicator lights reversing lights and these two are breaking tail lights this one ain't working. I've had a quick look just now to see if there's anything I can do, but we need to connect the battery back up and make sure we can deal with that. Moving down here, exhaust is doing the typical Corvette thing, and one side sits lower than the other side, so probably the exhaust hangers need to be looked at in the place, and these tips are horrendous. You'll either need cleaned or polished, or ultimately change the exhaust. Again, with this tow bar at the back here, I'm not entirely sure if that's a permanently fixed article on the 1998s so or whether I can remove it either way the rust needs to come off it so there we have it I'll put a list up here of all the stuff I'm going to be ordering at the start at least and the aim of this project at the moment is to get this car back on the road and with a valid full year's MOT certificate and then we'll take the rest of the nice to have things from from there so <clears throat> quite a bit of work to do on this before it's ready to go for its inspection but i'm hoping i'll do a video on almost each of the things i'll do a couple of project videos that mix up a few of the jobs i'll do a specific video on the roof and the, the aim is to get this hopefully within a month or two mot'd and back in a drivable state so that the rest of the summer can be enjoyed with the top off well, just as I've been filming this, I got my first delivery from Rock Auto in the States. Do you know something? If I order parts in the UK from eBay or something like that, or Amazon UK, and I order parts from Rock Auto on the same day, Rock Auto delivers faster than the UK services. From America to Scotland, I can get stuff in two to three days. And if I order brake discs locally or something like that, it takes five days. Right, and I forgot to mention, I said at the start, I would tell you what the mileage is in this car. I haven't guessed it yet. This is a gem, so it's definitely worth all the effort I'm going to put into it. The mileage in this car is 15,500 miles, 24,000 odd kilometres. Absolutely fantastic. 1998 car. The mileage is super, super low. So I'm hoping that when I take the brakes and stuff off, and jack it up and get underneath it. I don't come across a plethora of other problems, including suspension bushes and whatnot, but that's not a big deal. We'll address them, but it's just be nice to get this thing driven. 
So 15,000 miles. Unbelievable. 1998 Chevrolet C5 Corvette. Superb looking car. And we're going to get this one restored and back. So thank you very much for watching. Please hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Leave a comment below. I'm new to the world of Corvettes, I must admit. I know a little bit about them, but this is the first one I've had to do any serious work to. So comment below if there's anything you think I should look out for, particularly on that battery drain. And we will see you in the next Corvette or Mustang video. Thank you.